Lucy. Talking about doctors, and the NHS has announced uh, thousands of people suffering from type 2 diabetes have been offered to trial, and you, you were talking about this, this 800-calorie-a-day yeah. uh, diet. It's a very, very low, quite a radical low-calorie diet. Uh, it's a year-long plan, and it has been shown to reverse diabetes in some cases, uh, and it'll see volunteers provided with diet replacement meals, so they get shakes yeah. and they get soups and, I think, some meal replacement bars. OK. Well... We're going to be uh, we're, we're meeting now former Deputy Labour leader Tom Watson and Dr Michael Mosley, who have both transformed their lives uh, by beating type 2 diabetes. Uh, gentlemen, good morning, good morning to both of you. Um, and, and we're seeing a lot less of you than, than we used to. But, but Dr Mosley, I, I'm just careful. When we talk about beating and putting it into reverse and all this sort of thing about diabetes, can you beat diabetes? Can you really beat it or do you just put it into remission? Oh, 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 uh, oh, oh, wait a minute, doctor, just hold on, just rewind that again. Are we going to, do we have the doctor's sound? No, let's, Hello? well, while we're trying, oh, yes, we are do. you back, Michael? We do. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes we can, yes, yeah. We can yeah, now. Yeah. So the important thing is we're talking about type 2 diabetes rather than type 1, and that's the one which is linked to lifestyle. And as long as you lose the weight and keep it off, it seems to keep away. So I managed to reverse my diabetes in 2012, and here we are, eight years on, I'm the same weight that I was then, and my blood sugars are entirely normal. Congratulations. Congratulations. Very, very well done. That's it. I just wanted to establish that because I think a lot of people who may have this condition, they think, well, that's it. That's uh, with me now for life. And Tom, from, you know, there's always medication. There's always a tablet for something. What's your view on that? Well, for me, I, I got off my medication uh, but by actually following the work of Dr. Mosley. Uh, he's a lifesaver, and uh, I'm very, very grateful to him for his science and his books. Um, and what I did was read the research that he wrote about in his books, uh, and I realised that I could reverse the condition. I, with nutritional change, with cutting out sugar, changing my diet, and leading a slightly more active life, I didn't have to be medicated. Um, and that gave me massive freedom. You know, I can play with my kids more. I feel like I can think more clearly. But there's actually a really important public health issue here as well, because we spend nearly 10% of the NHS budget on treating people with type 2 diabetes when we could be using that money to invest in other things. And there are probably, the research shows there's probably a couple of million people that could do this. They could reverse their condition. So it's great to see Dr Mosley uh, continuing to challenge government to change and get people healthy again. Yeah, Tom, I mean, people often talk about having you know, a light bulb moment, people who have, who have dieted successfully, of having a life a light bulb moment, you know, seeing a photograph of themselves or something, or like you said, being breathless trying to play with their children. Did you have something that made you wake up to this? There is a gradual thought. I think for me, I was kind of in denial. I think there's a lot of people like me, a lot of middle-aged men in particular, who were just pretending they're not ill. Uh, and that's actually what I did for quite a while. Um, but this voice in my head said, look, you know, you're going to die if you don't change. And I've got young kids. Um, and eventually I committed, I pressed the switch in my head to on uh, and made the changes I needed to do. And I, I got better very, very quickly. I, I, I lost weight very quickly. I started to sleep better at night. I didn't go to the bathroom twice a night. Um, I, I felt calmer in the day. Uh, the weight came off. I was then more mobile. And I, I, I just feel like my life improved day by day when I changed my diet. And and did, you notice that, did you notice that fairly quickly, Tom? Because that, I suppose, gives people incentive, isn't it? Because it is, it's hard to get started. You know, let's face it, we all know what we do wrong and we like treats. It's hard to kind of get started. But how quickly did you notice the change? Very, very quickly. So, so the first thing you get back is your sleep when you change, when you come off sugar. Um, and, and when you're type 2, very often you do a, what they call a finger prick test to test your blood sugars in the morning. And... I think in a couple of months, I probably got my blood sugars into the range that people would say is average now. Um, but I left it a year because I wanted my GP to monitor me as well uh, before I went public about it. Um, I, and I felt very strongly I needed to sort of admit that I was type 2 diabetic because actually for the there are millions of people with type 2 diabetes who feel slight shame or embarrassment that they've got the condition and, that, and they don't like to talk about it. Uh, yeah, yeah. And for me, I think it's really important they admit it because that's the start of the journey. Well, 
we want them... It's not so much the talking about it, it's doing something about it, Doctor. What's, what's the path, what's the route, what's the first thing to get on that path? I mean, the first thing is to perhaps identify you've got it, because one in four people who have type 2 diabetes don't realise they've got it. And Tom um, started talking about some of the symptoms. They include going to the loo in the middle of the night, feeling very thirsty. You might have wounds that don't heal. So um, it's worth popping along to your GP, particularly if you're over 40, if you've got a big tummy, and if you have a family history. And just get yourself checked out. As I said, one in four people with diabetes don't know they have it. Okay. And then beyond that, you have to, really the best thing is to lose weight. You can do it any way you want. I'm an advocate of rapid weight loss. That's why I came up with the Fast 800. That's the approach that's being rolled out by the government with 5,000 people. Because contrary to a lot of what we've been told, rapid weight loss, if you do it properly, can be much more effective. Um, because, you know, you see the weight dropping off. It's 800 to 1,000 calories. The government is currently rolling out in the form of soups and shake. Uh, but uh, one of the sort of brains behind the Fast 800 is actually my wife, Dr. Claire Belly, who's a GP. She did a study with Oxford University recently showing that you can do it with real food. Um, and they showed um, average weight loss of nine and a half kilos. That's a stone and a half in eight weeks. And uh, people who were, had type 2 diabetes, their blood sugars, most of them, they went back to the normal range. So uh, yeah. it can be done either way. Uh, but rapid weight loss seems to be one of the effective ways of doing it. I've, Not I've the only way. After we spoke to you last time, Michael actually bought uh, Claire's book and the recipes are fantastic. And it's a very Mediterranean diet, so it's actually very tasty looking food. Um, Tom, let's talk about maintaining it, though. You've lost a staggering eight stone. And you're Say... a completely different looking person. Yeah. I mean, you're unrecognisable. Yeah, well, I, I'm taking that as a compliment, Eamon. Yeah, it is. <laughs> nobody, can call you, nobody can call you Tommy Two Dinners anymore, that's for sure. No. But, what, but what about maintaining it, Tom? That's the hard thing, isn't it? So you do this rapid yeah. weight loss, you feel fantastic, and then maybe yeah. it starts to creep on again, you have the odd little treat, and before you know it, you're back to square one. I'm kind of three years in there, and you definitely do... Um, you, you do sort of put a bit of weight on, and you have to keep an eye on it. Um, but for me, it still feels like I'm in control. You, you, know, you know, if I put a bit of weight on, I do a little extra run and I just watch what I, what I put in myself. Um, and I still, I, I probably would describe my diet now as a Mediterranean diet. So rather like our, our parents or grandparents would have, you, you know, I, instead of having meat and two veg, I probably have meat and four veg these days. Um, and lots of salads, lots of olive oil on the salad. And, and so far, so good. You know, I still feel healthy and I'm leaving how, that. How, how, how quickly, life. Doctor, do the cravings go? I mean, you know, if you've led the... You know, Tom, it's got to be typical of so many millions and millions of people mm -hmm. in terms of what he ate, when he ate it, eating on the go, all, the, all that sort of thing. And, um, you know, sugars and everything, you know, sugars in bread, yeah. sugars in We're baked beans. We're kind of addicted beans. to it, really, aren't we? Well, well, it's not that we're addicted to it. We can't avoid it. It's very, very difficult to avoid it. But what way does the body react to suddenly going into Tom's new lifestyle? It's, it's like going cold turkey, is it not? Well, you have to sort of adopt it, if you like, go the Ainsley route. You've got to cook stuff yourself. Uh, the biggest challenge is the fact that people eat a lot of highly processed food, food you can easily pick up in the supermarket in, you know, packets with 15 ingredients written on the side. So one of the first things to do is to actually embrace cooking from scratch yourself. And uh, my top tip is just get the junk out the house. Um, I have a terrible, terrible weakness for uh, chocolate. And so if there's chocolate or biscuits in the house, I will eat them despite everything I know. Yeah. yeah. And, Tom, uh, just going back, you know, if you put your politician's head on again, is there anything more governments can be doing about this? Because, you, you know, Michael's saying, get it out of the house, but why is it in the shops in the first place? And it is in everything. Why does the food lobby, in my view, get away with poisoning us? Well, the one thing I'd say is that the, the, the food lobby is very powerful and, and they, they try and persuade us that this is all about just doing more physical exercise. And that's part of it. But it's almost like the system is stacked against people. You know, they've got hidden sugars, they've got labels they don't understand, they've got buy one, get one free offers for the, the stuff that's really bad for you. Um, it's almost like, you know, they just need a little bit more help from the government to get over the line. Um, and they have launched a new obesity strategy, and this initiative in the NHS is a, is a good one as well. But until people start eating real food and not 
more processed foods. We're not going to crack it, I think, Eamon. And one thing I want to say to you is that includes microwave rice, by the way. <laughs> Do you know what? I know you're right. I know you. I actually know you're right. Shameful, but um, I, you know, I am where you were. I suppose that I've just you got could to get be where he, where, is where, now. Where he yeah. and Mike and Michael is. Yeah. Um, guys, thanks very much indeed. And um, you know, Michael's Michael's got lots of books and things and theories out on this. He, he and his wife, and uh, Tom's got that book there, Downsizing, where he um, uh, he tells his whole story on that as well. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you. Really interesting stuff.